Okay, so we are at time. I call this session of the Public Service Commission to order. <clears throat> Secretary Burgess, are there any changes to the final agenda? Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. There are no changes to this morning's agenda. Thank you. So with that, we'll get into the regular agenda. The first and only item for discussion is item 301, case 17T0752, which is the application of PSEG Long Island for a Certificate of Environmental Compatibility and Public Need for the Western Nassau Transmission Project presented by Administrative Law Judge Sean Mullaney. Judge Mullaney, please begin. Item 301 is a proposed order of the Commission granting pursuant to Public Service Law Article 7 granting a Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity or Certificate to PSEG Long Island LLC on behalf of and as agent for the Long Island Lighting Company doing business as LIPA. In the interest of brevity, Going forward, I'm merely going to refer to the petitioner as PSEG Long Island. The certificate would authorize PSEG Long Island to construct and operate the Western Nassau Transmission Project, an approximately 7 mile, 138 kilovolt underground transmission line to be constructed primarily in the, within public rights of way within the town of Hempstead, Nassau County. The project would provide a second electric transmission circuit between the East Garden City substation in Uniondale and the Valley Stream substation in Lynbrook. Importantly, the new transmission line would reinforce the LIPA electric transmission system in the southwest Nassau area, improving the reliability of service to LIPA customers on Long Island and enabling LIPA to meet the applicable North American Electric Reliability Corporation reliability standards. The proposed order is the result of a comprehensive settlement memorialized in the terms and conditions of a joint proposal, or JP, which is supported by five parties that have been active in this proceeding. They include PSEG Long Island, Department of Public S Service trial staff, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the Village of Lynbrook, and the Village of Rockville Center. And to the extent necess necessary, if I have to refer to them, I'm going to refer to them collectively as the signatories. No party opposes the JP. In fact, all active parties, with one exception, the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets, are signatories to the joint proposal. No public comments opposing the joint proposal have been docketed in this case. The JP describes the project as proposed by the signatory parties and includes appendices, several of which set forth recommended commission findings, certificate conditions, specifications for the development of the Environmental Management and Construction Plan, or EMNCP, and a proposed water quality certification. The joint proposal addresses the statutory and regulatory issues pertaining to PSEG Long Island's certificate request. Adequately discusses all probable environmental impacts and addresses the steps needed to ensure that the project as proposed represents the minimal adverse environmental impact considering the state of available technology and the nature and economics of various alternatives and other pertinent considerations process provided all interested parties and the public a full opportunity to participate and the parties adhered to our the, I should say to the set to the Commission's settlement rules and guidelines this proceeding included numerous opportunities for public input and the record establishes that the proposal advanced by the signatory parties is responsive to concerns about construction related traffic impacts and questions about increased electric and and magnetic fields at certain locations. The settlement negotiations, as well as comments from landowners and municip municipalities affected by the project, resulted in a number of material changes to the design of the project. For example, the use of 
Horizontal directional drilling will further reduce electromagnetic fields, even though they were already well within the Commission guidelines before this proposal was modified, and will address public concern concerns relating to construction-related traffic impacts. The revised stream crossing plan that was developed in consultation with Department staff, DEC, and the Nassau County Department of Public Works during settlement negotiations will ensure that impacts to water resources are avoided or minimized to the extent practicable. <clears throat> There's been no public opposition to the joint proposal. The terms and conditions of the JP will produce a reasonable result that is in the public interest and consistent with applicable state and commission policies. Accordingly, I recommend that the board adopt the proposed order, including the joint proposal which is attached with appendices. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm available for any questions the commissioners may have. Thank you, Sean. Um, this item is a reminder of a couple of important aspects of our work. Um, it's kind of a nuts and bolts item. Um, and it's also, um, as a process matter, a reminder of, you know, what good um, negotiation with parties looks like. Um, this is a project that's genuinely going to provide grid and engineering value to the system. Um, and it comes with uh, appropriate and widely endorsed conditions to accommodate environmental and community needs and health considerations. Um, and it is had a, it reflects the result of a process that had good opportunity for local participation and actually good activation of that opportunity. Um, and I am going to uh, support this item. Uh, Commissioner Berman. Thank you. Um, I do think this is uh, needed. Uh, there's the evidence that's been established that it's needed for reliability. Um, I also just want to note that um, I appreciated looking at the comments um, and having seen from the beginning that some folks, uh, some of the parties were opposed to it, but that the um, a petitioner worked through that and then was able to come to a, a joint proposal uh, with then um, some of the parties um, supporting it. Uh, and that, I think, was very helpful. I also appreciated the um, focus on there was um, uh, two individuals uh, who jointly submitted comments and their concerns, and they were addressed um, diligently um, by the petitioner. Um, I do note that um, having um, grown up in this area, understanding the congestion there, as well as the Long Island Railroad, and so I want to be mindful of that the um, uh, petitioner in now going to construction phase really needs to continue that same community engagement and dialogue um, and also any disruption to traffic um, and the Long Island Railroad itself, um, which I don't anticipate, but to the extent that that really needs to be carefully worked through um, and appropriate notices given. Um, so I am supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lisi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as was mentioned, this is unopposed and uh, it appears to be reasonable. Um, this will promote uh, reliability of service, which is the cornerstone of our responsibility here at the Public Service uh, Commission, so I will be supporting it. Thank you. Commissioner Edwards. Good morning. Questions. It says that they had put in an application to have a waiver for nighttime work. Uh, do you know if that's in, a res in the residential area or just in the commercial area or both? Well, the line is largely underground, and the rationale for 24 hour construction activities, which will progress along the path as the line is constructed, relates to the need for uninterrupted construction activities because when you splice the lines together, the end of the line is inside a, a cement vault and you need to maintain humidity and temperature within the vault so that the splice is done under proper atmospheric conditions. Otherwise, you'll have premature degradation of the line. 
So uh, along the entire length of the line, no, construction will not take place 24-7, but it will sequentially take place as necessary within those splicing vaults. Okay. And uh, with respect to residential areas, I believe the line travels mostly through commercial areas. But I don't know off the top of my head that it's exclusively along commercial okay. roadways. So if you could just take back that if there is going to be any nighttime noise in the residential area, it would be good if they um, actually communicated with the residents mm -hmm. so that they're aware. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, it says in the order that they have applied for or need to apply for a water quality certificate. So do you know if they have achieved that already? Uh, and if not, when do they expect to uh, achieve it? And will it, are they required to get it prior to the commencement of the project? One of, one of the attachments to the joint proposal, which in turn is attached to the proposed order, is a proposed water quality certificate. Okay pursuant to Section 401, I believe. Okay, very good. And just lastly, for communication, it would be great if they established a liaison for the community so that if there are concerns or disruption, uh, that, they, that the community, both business and residential, um, have a direct line of who to call so they're not calling randomly uh, into the company for assistance that could probably be solved quickly. Okay? Thank you. Are you nodding in agreement? I, I, <laughs> okay. I'm nodding that I hear and understand what Okay, very good. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Howard. Uh, I don't have any comments on this. I will be supporting. Thank you. So with that, we will move um, to vote, and I will move to call for a vote. My own vote is in favor of the recommendation to grant the certificate subject to the conditions adopted in the draft order as discussed. Commissioner Berman, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Lisi? Yes. Commissioner Edwards? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. The item is approved and the recommendation is adopted. We will now move to the consent agenda. Do any commissioners wish to comment on or recuse from voting on any items on the consent agenda? Commissioner Berman. Um, I have a number of um, uh, comments or questions. Um, they will be brief, though. Well, brief for me. Um, Item 264, 19E, uh, et al., which is the um, NYSIG RG&E um, filing on tariff for the GRT. Um, my question, I believe, to Council uh, is, I do understand that there's also a pending petition, the 2015 petition, 15M0457. How does this pending petition relate to that and any decisional impact on that? Good morning, Commissioner Berman. Uh, John Sipos. So yes, uh, this matter is a company proposed tariff uh, requesting a tariff amendment uh, with respect to the gross uh, receipts tax issue. Um, your reference to the 2015 uh, petition from the Council of Mayors which uh, sought a which sought the commission's assistance on uh, municipal gross receipts tax um, was received um, uh, by the department. That um, today's uh, today's order today's item um, is uh, addresses the company's specific request here. Um, the earlier petition from the council of mayors also touched on. Um, RG&E and NYSEG's uh, approach. So to uh, that extent, uh, today's, uh, today's order would, would, would cover it and staff will review uh, the 2015 petition um, for, for appropriate further action. Okay, and also to the extent that um, this draft order seems to suggest 
um, that if things are decided differently because NYSIG is still um, pursuing um, other avenues, um, that there may be in that if the for, and it's, if it's decided differently in another forum, um, that it may come back to the commission through uh, an individual petition. Can you explain a little bit about that? That's correct, Commissioner. Um, if there was a subsequent change, uh, today's order would not preclude uh, or would not bake in uh, today's action you know, uh, permanently, much like in the context of a federal income tax change uh, where the commission has addressed uh, tariffs uh, specifically or across the board um, to update to the current legal understanding um, there would certainly be that possibility here as well. Okay, thank you. And I do recognize that Tax and Finance had issued an advisory opinion, I think, 2009. I believe it's 2009. Um, I, I am mindful that they did not, um, they have remained silent um, in where they stand in this specific proceeding and in the larger 2015 proceeding to the extent that some of that, uh, some of those issues um, might also be helpful uh, to have some guidance from tax and finance as we move forward. Um, I am going to be supporting this um, because I think it is limited. Um, I am uh, concerned that the 2015 petition is still out there and also to the extent that there is um, somewhat of a continued um, question mark uh, as these issues are still being decided potentially in other forums and to the extent that customers ultimately um, need to have some clarity uh, on that and that the companies themselves uh, as well. Um, but I am, um, I am mindful that we are trying to align this to the other utilities, and so I will be supporting it, but I do just uh, note that I'm concurring because I am concerned that the external issues need to be addressed. So thank you. Are there any other items? Oh, I'm sorry. I... <clears throat> um, item 266, and thank you for reminding me. Item 266 you're going to be brief. <laughs> is the matter of retail access business rules. Um, I, I just want to make clear that as I read this, that this is really, um, while it is addressing the petitions for rehearing and petition for clarification, that it is um, really affirmatively only addressing um, at this time two issues. Um, can you just um, clarify that and make sure I understand the two issues? Uh, yes, Commissioner. Um, today's matter indeed is uh, a narrow, discreet order um, with two amendments of the UBP. Um, today's order adopts two common sense reforms. Um, the first reform is a result of the ESCO's request to the Commission to allow marketers to omit their last name from their name badges in an effort to protect those marketers' privacy and, in particular, to prevent risk of stalking. Uh, the second reform adopted here uh, um, does away with the so-called um, death fee, um, and it memorializes uh, requirements that are in New York State law consistent with the General Business Law Section 399-4Z. Um, uh, there can no longer, uh, under this order, there can be no longer uh, charges of customers for um, for a fee of early termination uh, when the customer dies. So these are two narrow, discreet, common sense changes. And today's order and today's matter does not prejudge um, any issues in any other ESCO proceeding. Okay, thank you. Um, I do appreciate that, and I do think the two discreet, low-hanging fruit items are appropriate. Um, I will. I am mindful that um, we do have the order does speak to some SAPA notice issues, and to the extent that I um, have been concerned about that, um, I can't vote uh, in full uh, as a full yes to that issue. Um, but I can concur that these two um, discrete issues are appropriate. Um, I also am very mindful that the ESCO. Um, matters that are still out there are very important. 
uh, and there's a need for regulatory um, certainty on those items and to also give folks um, an opportunity to um, uh, um, go forward uh, and make some uh, decisions based on that. So it, it's, um, it's important that we move on those items um, as well. Uh, so I will be uh, in concurrence on item 266. On item 268, which is um, the standby rates for STEAM Con Ed, I'm going to concur, similar to my voting record, in the May 16th, 2019 order and comments that I've said um, at the session at that time. On item 269, 18M0072, which is the utility rate analysis consultant's petition for declaratory ruling um, concerning the removal of customers from direct pay when a consumer elects to utilize the complaint process under 16NYC RR Section 12. Um, can you, um, Council, explain why we are... Um, moving as we are on this item and um, why we are um, uh, denying their petition for a declaratory ruling. Uh, yes, Commissioner. So uh, first of all, uh, as you noted, there are uh, pending uh, consumer matters uh, under Section 12, um, and that process here um, would allow the development of uh, the factual record to both assist in the in the resolution uh, of those matters and also potential subsequent commission review, depending on how um, the three-step consumer resolution process goes. So there already is actually uh, an avenue um, and a venue uh, to, to uh, address those issues. Um, the commission has discretion whether to grant or, or, or decline to issue um, a request for a declaratory ruling, and uh, the proposal here is that the uh, commission uh, decline to do so, um, given the pending uh, consumer uh, issues. And in that, uh, on that topic of consumer issues, um, in situations where there could be more than one or, or or more than a set of consumer complaints, it may be appropriate to group one or several of them as sort of a bellwether group, as sometimes happens in litigation matters, uh, multi-district litigation matters, um, and to develop the facts, but also then, uh, you know, have that, have that continue on through the consumer resolution process, because that is a way to provide, uh, as you referenced in your last comment, some, some certainty um, to stakeholders and people who are interested in the process. So that is today's order uh, seeks, to, um, uh, seeks to go forward with the, the existing consumer process and declines, and, 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 and the draft order proposed, as proposed, declines to uh, issue a declaratory ruling uh, at, at this point, at this time. Okay. Um, so what I, what I would like and I struggled with this item um, for a bit, uh, and um, what I'd like, and I'm, I'm going to be supportive, but it comes with um, some caution, which is that I think that um, there are times when we have um, individual complaints, um, whether they currently exist or they may be out there and we're not necessarily aware of them, but we're seeing it in an individual complaint that actually may be addressing a um, potential global issue that um, we need to, as a commission itself, weigh in on the policy and or the legal um, uh ramifications of that that may actually then give guidance to um, looking at the way that the um, utility is handling something and also helping to resolve any existing complaints with some guidance from the commission on how to handle that. Now, it's not going to be um, 
necessarily easy in all cases to decide this individual complaint is something that needs to be addressed by the Commission more globally. But to the extent that we are um, analyzing um, internally complaints that come in and making some um, uh, decisions on what is popping that really maybe needs um, the voice of the Commission to then um, weigh in on that, I think it's something that we should think about. Um, we want to make sure that we have um, favorable and fair results across the board, but also sending a signal that it doesn't become everything has to be decided in an individual case, understanding that there may be some threshold issues that then how it is applied um, will obviously be uh, at times a fact pattern for that particular customer and whether or not the policy statement or the legal issue um, uh, you know, meets what what's before them. So I just want to be careful in my agreeing to this that um, we are mindful that there are times that those types of issues need to come to the commission and that we may need to internally talk a little bit about what we're looking at, what we're seeing, um, and have some conversation on the process as well as resolution to some of those that may help unblock some issues. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, then on 370, I am concurring um, as consistent with my voting record. Um, I have, um, this is um, uh, not necessarily deciding things that you know, we've, it's already been decided a lot of this. Um, this is helping to make the process better. Um, but I am very mindful that we are also establishing that NYSERDA is needing to um, submit certain reports and to be also um, focused on um, uh, its accounting and looking at um, the reconciliations and making sure that they are um, proper, and then if there are any over-collections, addressing that. I do think that this is a good item in that it is helping um, smooth out some of the process um, that came uh, to light while we were implementing this, but I am very mindful that we need to ensure um, that all parties, um, which includes NYSERDA, is um, diligently being accountable, um, timely, and transparent in their um, uh, reconciliations and looking at the processes and engaging as appropriate with the relevant affected stakeholders. Right, and, and so just for the record, this is the ZEC implementation plan, and uh, it is our understanding that this will increase the speed of the process. Right, okay. Consistent with your comments. And, and so therefore, I'm going to concur with that with some caution on that, that the goal needs to be met. Um, on 373, which is the Transco um, Section 70 filing, um, I, I do, and is that you? Okay. Uh, I can try. Okay. Um, I do note that um, it's a petition for an order approving financing. I do note that I believe this is the first time um, that I'm aware of um, that we are uh, approving a petition for financing Section 70 of a um, petitioner that has um, – uh, public utilities as a part of it, um, and I see Jay there. So, um, and and that for me, um, I was very glad to see that the order had language that talked about um, differently from other petitions for Section 70 that talked about on um, the reporting requirements that were necessary. Um, it is still lightly regulated, and so I don't think that what we put in this order. Um, changes that, and I think it just helps to make sure that we are um, appropriately recognizing this petitioner is a little different from other petitioners and acknowledging that um, and m being mindful of telling the petitioner 
that these filings um, and this report every March 1st, I believe, is important. Um, I do want for us to make sure, because the petitioner has ratepayers as its customer, the financial risk while on the petitioner does, um, you know, have some indirect impact on the ratepayer that I just want to be mindful that we are very carefully looking at those reports and engaging in dialogue so that as it may affect that, we make sure that it's appropriate with our lightened regulation on the Section 70. Does that make sense? Yes. So this is the Transco matter, um, and the draft order does uh, speak to the concerns, does call out or acknowledge the concerns that you have raised. And I understand that staff will be you know, closely scrutinizing the reports as they come in uh, on this, uh, to your point about, about caution. I don't know if Assistant Counsel Goodman has anything else I'd like to add to that. Good morning, Commissioner Berman. Um, I will add just to note for the record, it's the Section 69 petition oh, for sorry. financing approval. Um, but even if it were a transfer uh, approval, we would look at it with uh, the perspective that you said because uh, Transco is comprised of affiliates of investor-owned utilities. Uh, there is a higher level of regulatory scrutiny that's necessary as compared to the typical lightly regulated entity. And as you noted, we took that into consideration in the recommended outcome here. Um, one other uh, factor that was taken into consideration is that although New York, tra the New York Transco is subject to wholesale rate regulation by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, so there's an additional layer of protection for ratepayers there. Um, although here New York Transco is not um, through the use of its transmission line serving end use uh, retail ratepayers that we, you know, typically. Um, focus very carefully on when there is a potential uh, direct harm to them. Yeah, thank you. And that, I think, is very important. And I just flag it because I do, first of all, a recognition and thank you to the staff that worked on this because I do think it's important. Um, but I, I think it's important also to note the distinction that was made here differently, um, but that that is an appropriate um, uh, and effective. So um, I just want to point that out. Then my only last um, final item is 562, which is um, the charter communications item. I do want to note that um, as it speaks to one of the issues that I had raised um, and had concern with, uh, at the last time we addressed 562, which dealt with the language on staff or commission uh, language. And um, I am mindful that the commission, um, as a majority, um, voted to approve that. And therefore, because of that, um, I am mindful that I am looking here and I'm going to be voting for this item, even though it doesn't change how I felt um, when I dissented as to that. Um, but I am also mindful that um, there is language in here that talks about uh, communicating with the commission. Um, so whether it's the staff or the commission, um, I am uh, um, cognizant that you'll be engaging with us, but I do just want to point out that the distinction on why I'm voting yes here, um, because I do think it's important that if the commission as a majority um, acts and this doesn't change my um, vote from before, it does make us move forward. So um, thank you. And thank I have you. no other comments. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lisi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will be supporting uh, the consent agenda, but I would like to remark on item number 264, if I may. Uh, among the goals of uh, the state and uh, many of our municipalities is the uh, expansion of CCA, our community choice uh, seg aggregation, and uh, recovery of the municipal GRT is very important toward that end. So I'm going to support, uh, as I said, the entire consent agenda and specifically uh, with 264 um, this item without regard to any unresolved external issues thank you 
Commissioner Edwards. I also will be supporting the consent agenda. I just want to thank the staff for providing additional information on 528, 266, and 722. Uh, the Suez Water, Silver Springs, and Hamilton. I just think it's important for us to uh, drill down a little bit more on uh, what the average customer increase will be uh, on a monthly basis uh, so that we're looking at it in uh, its totality. So I just want to thank you very much for that additional information provided. Thank you. Commissioner Howard. I will also be uh, supporting the consent agenda. I have one comment on item 264 uh, on a personal note. I have never been comfortable with using tax avoidance as a mechanism to provide discounts to third-party uh, escrows. And uh, as uh, a larger proceeding person, I look forward to the larger proceeding as it unfolds. Thank you. With that, um, I will um, almost proceed to call for a vote. Um, Secretary Burgess, can you do me a favor and um, with respect to Commissioner Berman's uh, concurrences and the like, could you, could you remind us of the notes you have on how she's voting? Um, and Commissioner Berman, if you can, can uh, confirm this, I have notes that you are concurring on items 264, the gross receipts tax, item 266, the UBP, uh, 268, the Con Ed STEAM item, and item 370, the CES SEC implementation plan. Correct. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you both. So uh, my own vote is in favor of the recommendations on the consent agenda. Commissioner Berman? Uh, yes, except for right. Thank you. Ex excellent. Uh, Commissioner Lisi? Yes, as I indicated in my remarks. Thank you. Commissioner Edwards? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Uh, the items are approved and the recommendations are adopted. Secretary Burgess, is there anything further to come before us today? Nothing further today. Thank you. Okay. So um, before we adjourn, can I just do uh, one uh, personal note? Um, there, there are folks in the room here that are not our usual visitors. I think your New York agree. Maybe that's a shorthand. Um, I just want to go on record as applauding the citizenship that you're displaying. Uh, you're showing up. You're commanding attention to your issues Fundamentally, that's good for our democracy, and that's good for our state. Thank you very much. With that, we're adjourned.